Hello, the topic of this video is actually a replacement of uh, this video here. So one of the earlier installations of Arch Merged is uh, still on Arch Linux D. It's the installation of Arch Linux D XFCE. So if you do not know, uh, Arch Linux has three major projects, which is called Arch Linux, the big ISO, Arch Linux D, the small ISO, we're going to make a tutorial about that one and we can build your own ISO, so that's phase four. So Arch Linux D starts in a black terminal, you get the scripts, you edit scripts, you change scripts, you run scripts, and done. You have your Arch Linux D XFCE. All right, so I've uh, prepared everything here. So we see here that we have uh, a virtual box already to boot up, so Arch Linux D has been uh, installed already. The only thing I need to do is say okay let's boot existing OS. So let's go over the steps to install Arch Linux D XFCE. First thing is of course login and the second thing they are going to advise is indeed to uh, get the fastest service. Since this ISO goes global it means you have to have the fastest service in South America, North America, Australia, Germany, wherever you're located, is going to look what's the fastest service for my country. Done that. Next you can do is see are there updates from Arch Linux and Arch Linux. Arch Linux is 90% of your system and Arch 3% of your system. Meaning 93% is up to date after this one. And if we run then PKSYUA, as last one, then the AOR packages will update as well. And AOR stands for Arch User Repository. We see we have a new Linux kernel. Be aware of Linux kernels and VirtualBox elements since we are working on VirtualBox. First reflex you have to do is update, but let's first type this one as well to just check and no updates available for AOR. So like I said, always reboot so sudo reboot maybe name you know because of a great channel you can watch online on youtube sudo reboot google it all right booting up we're back with a new kernel 4.17.8 everything works everybody happy we have a newer kernel okay now we have to install something so the procedure is always the same get your scripts and of course later change your scripts for the first time i just recommend hey just install them see what you get and then decide i don't want this i don't want that i'm missing this so i'm adding a line so it's all editable you can change it so github.com arco linux d the d stands for desktop you decide the desktop so it's a very small minimal we're on black screen which i call terminal tty another name and we're going to install XFCE. You could, could have easily installed now BSP, WM, or Awesome, or GNOME. We have now 11 possible choices. And in July 2018, 13 ISOs to download and to test out, to learn and have fun, of course, not just the learning. So XFCE, all right, let's go. Now, if you get an, an um, a thing like this username what's your username what's your password you just did a typo that's it you see it just worked so just a typo ls change directory to arco xfce ls give me a list and here it goes uh, we have to run a list of scripts the names should help but of course, in lots of these scripts are separate applications you should take a look at. So this is the one that says, hey, use not one core, but four cores, eight cores, 16 cores, whatever hardware you have. I have eight cores, so four for the virtual box and four for the host. Of course, we wanna have something graphical. Oh yeah, please do. So 100 is the display manager. So that's LightDM that we're using and is also XFCE. So we see already something. Uh, 
Then, next up, LS is um, 110. You do want some music or video sound. Maybe the video as well. LS again. Do you need, do you want Bluetooth? So, depending on the hardware you have, maybe a Bluetooth keyboard, mouse, maybe keyboard and, and Bluetooth headset. So, it all depends if you want to run these things. Now, I did a typo, so never mind, don't lose time with it going back, just to enter point slash again. And there we go. We're off to have printers. So if you don't, you're not intending to print, don't install it. But even I need to install a driver for my Canon system, but it's there on the AUR, so I looked for it. And it's now in one of my scripts to just install uh, the printer drivers. 140 is telling, hey, I want to share a folder on my machine with those people on the network. And who can log in into my computer? Well, Eric can. And he has this password and that password. And now somebody at home from my network can log in and check out what's in my shared folder, which calls that's the one we set up in our tutorials. And then last but not least, people are looking for this configuration often. That's to navigate to your NAS, to your network attached storage. So things in your network to navigate to it and to find it even on your system here, on your network at home. 200 is a bunch of software. It's coming from Arch. So this is all Arch repos like GIMP, Inkscape. So stuff maybe you won't use. Atom, I do recommend you install that in that editor. You'll see me use it from time to time. And uh, the coloring possibilities, functionality that's in there. The coding syntax for languages. So it has some advantages. GIMP is just passing by, I see. JPEG, stuff I always use to be creative, to be, um, well, to design, basically. We're installing Chromium, FileZilla. FileZilla is one thing that I think can go for me. Not using FTP stuff, but it's, uh, it seems still installed in this version. So all I need to do, maybe that's a good idea to just show you. So I'm opening on uh, my KDE or Plasma system. I'm opening Article Linux D. Here it is. And I just decided, just on my own, just now, that in the 200 Arch Linux repo, I decided to control find FileZilla. There it is. I don't want it anymore. I put a hashtag in front of it. I save it. I upload it to GitHub. And next time you'll see it will not be installed. It's that simple. So editing a file couldn't be easier. So, but the first time just say, go ahead, just install everything. Then go over every, every little application and then say, I will never use FTP. I will never use torrents and so on. And you just say, don't install it anymore. Let's get rid of this here. So we see everything is okay. So this is 200. Then there's the next one. That's the AUR, meaning Arch User Repository. Has nothing to do with Arch. Has everything to, everything to do with people providing software for Arch. So it's coming from Debian. It's coming from Red Hat. It's coming from GitHubs. It's coming from zip files. Wherever it's coming from, people make a package build, which is the technical term, to put the software in places so it works. So that's um, AUR, that's the thing that most likely will break because it's uh, dependent of the maintenance of the users and the links that they're pointing to and so many other things like uh, GPG keys and stuff like that. But the fun stuff is coming from AOR. There are lots of things that we need to get from there, Dropbox and Instinct, Spotify, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, um, it's interesting to take a look at all these packages and there are lots of packages 
on the AOR. Opening a website to the AOR right now. So this is the AUR, Arch Linux User Repository. Then just click on popularity again. And then you see that our man is one of the biggest. Yay, Spotify is here, Discord is here, Tryzen is here. You go down the list, you see what people find, well, popular. And this one is votes or something else. Votes is zero, so click again. 3033 people said eight, that's a good thing. And you go down the list again and you see Team Viewer already at the top lots of stuff maybe stuff you will never use so just leave it be but it's a good thing if you've never been on arch to take a look what's well most voted and most popular and see if anything is in there that you say oh i'm missing this one i want that one so now you know the name discord that's how it's written and then you can install it with Tryzen or any of the AOR helpers that will change over time. We have had Packer and Pakaur and Kaur and there are so many out there. Today, mid-July 2018, it's um, Yaourt is on the way out probably. I mean, I'm not, we, not sure, but we have a Tryzen and we have Yay. So um, there'll always be a AOR helper out there. Let's wait for the video here. Let's, um, I mean, I pause the video because of this installation. I've just installed set yes to the VirtualBox installation and that's 300 for us. Then we have a look at 400, which is distro specific. So we have now 11 desktops, yeah, 11 desktops. And some of the applications are really well specific to the distro. And that's what this, uh, these two are. So, or they come from the Arch, Arco, Linux depot or they come from the AOR. Um, well, the, this script is coming from the AOR and previous one is for Arch and the Arco one is coming in 600 to be correct here. Yay AD, that's for our Conkeys. So if you're not interested in, in having Conkeys, you don't need this uh, con if you, Conky Zen, if you, the name already says something, we need that uh, application for Conky Zen. One of the major ones is all the Arco stuff. So this is this is this three percent, and we're not using even these three percent. I mean, it it's a collection of all packages from Arco Linux. What we say in XFCE, you need this package, that package, that one is for Awesome, that one is for BSPWM, that's one for this one, and and so on. So we've selected a bunch of uh, packages that we need on XFCE, and of course if we're not installing OpenBox, we will not install OpenBox or i3 stuff. So it's just how we select things. Next one, that's what 600. So LS, if you remember, if you forget, 700 and 710. 700 is for general fonts for the system. And if your intent is to install the conkeys, you need to install the fonts for the conkeys. So that's 710. And then we have 800. So the thing is, I like to push on my power up button and then go away, set my coffee, come back, and I'll be on my desktop rather than him asking me, hey, what's my login? What's my password? I know my login, I know my password. There's no need to ask me. There is no security issues at home. So I'm gonna auto login. He wants to know my login. And now I am able to log in automatically. Some of us have this microcode error from Intel. So if you see an error popping up in the beginning, that's the message that you should install it. And then a fix for the browse, the mouse, the cursor, the breeze, the snow cursor. So you want to have the same uh, cursor everywhere on any application. And then we are going to see what did we create. Some of you may have already seen the pictures I've made on articlenexd.com about uh, how XFC actually looks. Let me first show you how Arco Linux looks. This is our XFC version, all right? 
let me see if I can find a picture of XFC vanilla installation without anything. I found it on the archway installation. So this is XFCE. This is how it normally looks when you start uh, using XFCE with a little mouse here, a panel which is not plank. It's an XFCE plank um, panel. <laughs> and we have some icons here and a menu that opens up here for desktops. And this is the look what we normally get if we install XFCE. When you run these two guys here, you'll get this look and then it's up to you to us to make it nicer. So we did it, we made it nicer. I hope you like it. This is XFCE, we've changed a lot of things. You can immediately change your wallpapers here, which this one is an awesome one. It's not mine, it's coming from Desktopper. We like it, you click on Desktopper and then you continue, continue. Make sure you have an account, log in, and all you need to do is click here, sign up to sync to Dropbox. So if you have a Dropbox account, then this cloud becomes white and this wallpaper will be put or synced on your Dropbox and you can share it with people you care. And um, this Gerard Macy may have other wallpapers that you like and you can go check out what people put on there. So this is XFCE, Control alt t and there you go, Arch Linux D, but then with XFCE. All right, enjoy.